So, have you guys used this an anonymous app thing? No, not yet. Okay, so this is the last time I'll use it, but I wanted to try it for the show, right? Mm -hmm. So I used it once myself, and I just got a bunch of normal questions, and the only thing that made the anonymous, like the only element that changed, was I had several people ask me directly about certain coaches, Mm. right? Uh. And they wanted to do it anonymously. They're like, hey, I'm working with this guy, and he did this, and I think it's really a mistake. What do you think? Like that sort of stuff. And I, you know, I don't want to fucking get involved in a lot of that. But so that was the only thing that changed for me as far as anonymous. Right. Nobody, Dusty, you, you lied. Dusty said he did it, and all these girls were messaging him like, "I want to suck your dick," and he was like, "It was a real pain in the ass." And then I did it. Not a single fucking dick sucking offer. Well, you not understood. That's what I get when I do non-anonymous. Oh, sorry, Dusty. Okay, that's the point. <laughs> so, I mean, how else am I supposed to know who to call? Right, right. It makes life easy for you. So, uh, so yeah. So, anyways. And the thing is, is you can't answer with a video answer, which is what I like to do on normal questions, right? Oh, you have to like. Ass. Yeah, so it's not as cool. But I thought I'd try it for this just because of the anonymous element. You know what I mean? But um, I just kind of got all the like, regular like questions we would. There was nothing like extra spicy uh, for, you know, hmm. no one saying, you know, what a, how they've been watching Dusty's beard for years and they just can't wait to have it between their thighs. Oh, wait, that is one. No. You, what was her name? Damn it. It's anonymous. You fucking <laughs> killing me. So, so here's one. I don't know who to listen to regarding digestive aids. How do I start to keep it simple when bulking and in prep just to keep me regular? So <sighs> digestive aids. Well, I mean, it said person. Um, so like my, my go-to with digestive things, if somebody came to me and they had a question beyond my realm for digestion, I sent them to Chris Tuttle. Okay. That he knows that shit. Only problem is Chris Tuttle is slammed and most of the time is not taking someone. I had somebody that really did, like, she explained her situation. I was like, look, I can take a shot, but if I were you, I would hire him. And she reached out to him and he wasn't taking clients. And like six or seven months later, she's like, I started with Chris and it's been amazing. That's cool. So, you know, he's definitely who I would suggest you're talking about an individual because there's been a few people that I've talked to that have had very complicated digestive stuff and he he knows i don't know right okay um well as far as trying to you know i don't know i would start with a scoop of fiber before bed that would be like the first thing i would do if i had any digestive issues if you're not doing that like i just find that is just my favorite thing in the world my pre pre bed shake has a scoop of fiber in it like like 25 30 grams of fiber like a pretty heavy dose. And I'm like, I, I love it. And uh, so anyone that's having digestive problems and they want to like look at prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and all that stuff, knock yourself out. There's lots of options, but I would make sure like, like what's your fiber? Like, are you eating enough fiber? Some people don't realize how little fiber they consume, right? Oh, it's steak and rice four times a day. Yeah, like, the you basics. Have at all? like, you know, right. so that can be something to start with, but yeah. You know, I'm digestive health isn't my wheelhouse because I've generally always had pretty good digestion. Like, you know, people always complaining about, oh, my stomach hurts, this and that. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, I don't really know what you mean. Like, oh, I'm so bloated after that meal. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, I'm pretty, I'm fine. So mm-hmm. I never really had a lot of problems. Okay. Victoria is really good with that stuff. She's not taking clients right now, but she's so she's, she's of no help. She's she's a wizard with that stuff, though. And and I've learned a lot. So you'll always know that she would have your answers, but she will not help you. So. I've learned a lot through her because I started learning how much of our digest, how much of those enzymes are related to our gallbladder and our liver and how making sure those things are running smoothly if you're having issues that those things will help to also improve mm. digestion and clearance of things like estrogen, you know? So interesting. Yeah. 
So you they can hire Scott and, and get like, Honey. Victoria somewhat. <laughs> but when you call, make sure to mention Victoria so Scott can raise his prices. Okay. <clears throat> She'll be available soon, but yeah. <laughs> What's the sloppiest condition all three of you guys ever let yourselves get into? Do you want a picture? <laughs> I got one. <laughs> I would say, was that? Uh, I want to say it was 2013. Um, I took about six or eight weeks off from training, off from gear, and off from bodybuilding. Um, the best part is, I did it three of those weeks. I was touring in um, Australia. So I was like white, fat, small. Um, and it was a planned thing. I was just tired and I was like, all right, I'm just gonna let it roll until I have to go back to the gym. And the, the 180, uh, in conditioning and everything when I got back was awesome. Hmm. But to say it was a pathetic starting point is an understatement, even for someone of my piss poor genetics. So on to the next, <laughs> what about you guys? Um, well, I mean, the most fat I ever had on my body was probably when I was 330. But, but I wouldn't call it my sloppiest because I was also like my absolute biggest and strongest. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I almost think that it was when I started my prep for my last show in 2015. And I started my prep in like, would have been like March. And... I had been injured and cleaned out completely for months. And I was like, you know, just under 300 pounds, but with small arms and legs because I just hadn't been training because I was injured. I was trying to rest my joints. And, and I remember my pictures were just fucking terrible. Like they were the worst photos I ever saw of myself. Like I couldn't believe that I'd been bodybuilding for so many years and I could have pictures that look like that. Huh. Like, I remember just thinking, like, <laughs> how do I expect, how do I expect to win anything when I start like this? Like, this is too far. And I remember Chris Aceto, I tell that story all the time. I say, I send him the pictures and he goes, you have 20 weeks and you need every single one of them. Hmm. And I remember when he said that, I was like, fuck, he's right. I didn't realize oh. how bad I looked. Yeah. But I was like 298 or something like that, 297. But it was just not being able to train like I wanted to. You know, I was doing all these super light, like, you know, fuck around leg workouts, trying to get my knee better. And, uh, yeah. you know, I was, couldn't, didn't really train arms for a bit. I was trying to rest my elbow and, like, just bullshit, you know? What about you, Scott? I sent you those, Scott. I got a picture from Dusty here. That's not bad, This, this man. is the... This is not... Look at that fat ass. What are you talking about? That's not bad at all. <laughs> God, is that bad, Ron? Look how monstrous your legs look when your ass is that fat. <laughs> well, he's pretty smooth, but I've definitely seen worse. You know, definitely yeah, seen a, worse. Was, I remember taking those pictures and being like, okay, we got work to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was frightening. Scott, your turn. I never got yes. really too far out of shape that I've always been able to maintain more or less. But um, when I have, here's, here's small guy problems. When you are a guy that competes at around 200 pounds, then when you go into your off season, you run into like not even looking like a bodybuilder anymore, because at least in your own head, you know what I mean? Because like, if you're, if you're a guy that's three thirty, say, you're jacked. You're massive. You're wearing four X shirts. Your arms are even if you don't feel like your arms are a strong point. Your arms are crazy. You know your legs. Right. Are the like size twenty one and a half cold. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Whereas like a two hundred pound bodybuilder who's at two thirty just looks like a fat guy. He doesn't have any shape to anything. His waist is as you know big, and it's just that it's not a. It, that was I remember that was the problem I would run into was like. The bigger I got, the less I would look, especially earlier on, like competing in middleweight and then getting up to like 220. You know, that's a lot. 
You know, you just you stop looking like you even lift. You like the smaller of a bodybuilder you are, the more in shape you have to be to look big. You know, your waist has to be tiny so that a 16 inch arm looks big against, you know, when you're doing a side chest. Right. Right. Yeah. I get what you're saying. Oh, we lost Dusty. Yeah. His, I bet he did that intentionally. His his connection was looking weak. There he is. He just likes to stop sometimes. Oh, he's so much clearer now, too. I had a huge lag, so I wanted to wait for you to finish answering before I just hung up. Yeah, okay. so I was just waiting. I, I moved my head, and I was like, oh, that's like six seconds. Yep, we'll go ahead and hang up when Scott's was, done answering. It was after you sent the text, too. Interesting. Yeah. But I'm not on Wi-Fi. I don't know. But they're both. But there are both mac uh, apple so who knows I have a my thought. computer oh. knows that i sent that yep. text yeah so that makes sense all right moving on <clears throat> okay okay we're looking for another one right yes you are we're doing I nothing forgot. i forgot what app i was using not pornhub <laughs> what are your thoughts on iv drips for vitamins and all that stuff i'm not sure if it's worth the cost so that gives me the impression that, you know, maybe he's like, like a young bodybuilder on a budget. Then don't do it. Simple. It's like 300 something dollars to do those. I have done them during preps. Um, I'm lagging again or no? Eh, your video is off, but you sound great. Yeah. Sounds all right, cool. Good. Sounds all that matters. Huh? Video looks like shit anyways. Um, <clears throat> so no, you're, you're, it's just not worth the money. Simple. It's like three hundred dollars. If you're to me, it's very simple with bodybuilding. If you ask yourself that question, you don't need it. Same thing I say with growth. Is growth worth it? How much money do you have? I make three hundred grand a year. Yes, it is. Right. I know. I had a guy message me the other day. He's like, "No, it's not." He's like, "Should I throw growth in for the last six weeks of my prep?" And I'm like, "Well, how much money do you have?" (laughs) Like. Is that nothing to you or is that like yeah. a mortgage payment to you? Yeah. You know, cause there's like, it, that's, that's, it, it all just depends. You know what I mean? So, okay. For sure. So here's a, so this question's funny, but I want to ask it anyways, just cause we never talk about this, but this is like kind of interesting. A lot of people don't know this stuff, but the question is worded this way. Um, Something he's talking about side effects from steroids. Um, is that because you know all these steroids are really old from the 50s, 60s, and 70s? Why are we not coming out with new steroids that don't have side effects? Hmm. So I get what he's saying. He's saying, you know, we have all this chemistry ability. Why are we not making perfect new steroids that are side effect free? And I guess that's what like that's kind of the attempt. That's what the, the idea, that's what they were trying to do with SARMs was the selective androgen modulation element of the drug, right? Where it, it only selectively modulated yeah. the, the androgen receptors in the muscle tissue. That's the goal, right? Strip the drug of side effects, just activate the muscle tissue. But that's just really hard to do. But that's essentially what they've been trying to do with SARMs that they just, you know, we've talked about that before, but, you know, that there's still nothing beats the actual steroids. But so he's just kind of equating the age of the drugs with them being old, but they're still all the best drugs. You know, all the testosterone derivatives and all that stuff are still what all the bodybuilders are still using. So I don't know. What do you guys think of how people perceive that? Go ahead, Scott. Man, I I don't have much more to add than what you already said because I I mean the I think that that is what they're trying to yeah I, I I'm with you and you you said it all wasn't it wasn't D ball D ball was invented in like 1957 wasn't it like something like that or 59 I think it was 1957 and then testosterone was actually used by the German military in World War II hmm. I mean they've talked about how they were given testosterone to soldiers to help them like recover and just, you know, like we're giving them amphetamines too. So that's a, that's a, a good war stack. Yeah. And so uh, yeah, methadone as well. Methadone really. Yeah. yeah like when they were out in the woods and they didn't have as many, um, 
um, certain, excuse me, they didn't have as many supplies and they were cold. They started because they were trying to create their own synthetic morphine since they were cut off from the opium. So they came up with methadone, which, you know, didn't work the same. But they're like, yeah, we'll give it to the guys and they'll be less hungry, less cold. It'll be good. Oh, OK. OK. Look at you. <laughs> See, awesome. Scott knows some shit, too. That was like okay. a Ron fact, wasn't it? Hey, Ron didn't know that. That was a Ron fact. <laughs> so, the, so are you saying the German military invented methadone? Uh, Hitler's people did. Yeah. In and fact, it's now like the main way that they detox heroin addicts, right? They try to keep them. Yeah, it's it's, it's one like of part them. of the it's an older part school. of the treatment. Yeah. yeah, I think as is a that, matter of fact, there was the the name. I can't remember the chemical name. If it's. Uh, Dolphane or something. It had something right. to do with like in honor of Hitler, something like that. I could have just made all this up. So there's also that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't this is a disclaimer. Yeah. Research. Could have just. This. No, I yeah. could be making this up. But the German military designed this. <laughs> this goes into detail, and they even worked his name into the into the into the chemical name of the of the compound. I could be making this up. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Okay. Here, here's Great one story. If you are, here's one. Why do we have a TV show about 600 pound morbidly obese people, and we don't have a TV show about 275 pound jacked people? It's a good question. It's a good question. <laughs> Why don't people want to follow Dusty around in his prime, other than on YouTube? They should. Why aren't the big channels doing it? Yeah. Why doesn't MTV follow it? Follow him around? Because I'm not a hoarder, and those people are usually hoarders, which is awesome to watch and be disgusted in your, their life, and it makes okay. you feel as the viewer good about yourself. What's the is is hoarders? Let's talk about hoarders for a second. That's probably like the sickest show, like. Of all those reality shows that like oh. show people at their at their mentally most unwell, wouldn't you would you say Hoarders is kind of the king? Is there anything worse? Yes. What's what's worse? I don't watch no. any of that shit. No. Are we losing Dusty? I think so. Oh. I think the leg is yeah pretty rough still. I was having like a conversation with him and he was like thirty seconds behind. Yeah, it was kind of rough there for a second. I can't watch those shows, man. Like the hoarder shows and stuff like no, that. No, man. It's too That's much. That's fucking crazy. Well, especially you, Ron, because you like to keep everything really neat. That would be like your absolute nightmare, you know? Oh, absolutely. What if you had a really good Where friend and you were, you know, you were like, hey, I'm going to go and visit my friend and stay with him for a week. And then you found out that that's what his house looked like, you know? So, yeah, I've never had that happen. Dusty, you're back. Main clear. For now. I mean, I love this apartment so much and the service provider is so good. <laughs> so we're talking about hoarders. We're talking about hoarders. Yes. Have you ever gone to visit someone? Grandma. And you're like, oh, I'm going to crash at their house. And then you get there and you're like, oh, I can't crash here. They're hoarders. My grandmother. <laughs> Your grandmother. For sure. I'm talking okay. like papers like as in like the newspaper as in mail just piled up in the house you needed it was like a pathway that you could ninja your way through to get somewhere and mind you you know i like clean you can't clean there is shit right. everywhere so yeah it's it is absolutely disturbing behavior because what I find the most disturbing is the fact that they don't see it. Right. Like, like if your house is dirty for whatever reason, if it was messy and someone dropped in, you're like, Oh my God, this is fucking embarrassing. And I'm talking like you got a few plates out. You're like, oh shit. You know, this is years of effort of laziness. And they're like, come on in, have a cigarette. Sorry, that's what they would do. And uh, you're like, oh, no, good. Into a tennis yeah. shot this morning. So, yeah, no, that's that's bad. I I, oof. I couldn't watch that show. I would be disgusted. I went over to a guy's house once. I remember I was like, went over to pick something up. 
And we were walking from a restaurant. He's like, oh, just drop by and pick it up. I was like, okay. So he's dropped by and he was with his wife. So we like walk up to there, but we go in and their apartment is like the hottest sweat box. I like I, I've ever been in and the windows are all closed. And I was like, holy fuck. I can't believe they don't have a window open because they're on like the 10th floor. They could easily just open the windows. Yeah. And they're like, oh no, we got cats. We don't want the cats to get out. Hmm. Of the 10th so floor, they, they won't. Yeah. And so like they, they kept them closed. But then once I came inside, I was like, oh, this place smells like cat piss. Like reeks like cat piss. So it was like a hot box of cat piss. And they were just like totally fine. They were just like functioning normally. Like they didn't even notice it. And I was just like. <laughs> <laughs> so it's That's funny. Disgusting. But then you wonder like, am I just being judgy? Like, no. is that normal? This is how some cat people live. They invited you into the house. They should not have done that. <laughs> I would at least know that. Like, I, dead serious. Like, if you, if you had a puppy and you knew, like, all right, he's brand new, and you know, I left him in, in a in a room. You know, that room has shit all over it and piss, <laughs> yeah. whatever. So, like, I would I wouldn't invite you in even with that. And he's right, in an enclosed right. area because I'm like. I have to clean up piss and shit as soon as I walk in the door. You want to come in yeah. 15 minutes? Come on over. Right. These people right. should they know their house smells like cat piss. You have to. That is a smell that will wake up dead people. Yeah. Oh. Sorry, I brought I'm my grandma judgy. back into the conversation. I'm I'm, I'm with judgy. you though, so it's fine. We're ganging up on this person now. Hopefully he doesn't listen to the show. Open the window no, by the way, tenth floor. The cat's not suicidal. It's fine. I'm, and if it does jump out. That's, that's its just, decision. He wanted out bad just, enough to cats, risk it. That's just cats deciding. It's just cats deciding. That's all that is. <laughs> I, I've got you know a little I mean? research for you guys. Okay. About cat piss? No, about dolophene. That, that was the chemical name. Or back to Adolf. <laughs> yeah. So so it was thought. So I guess dolo is the Latin word for pain. And then finis is the Latin word for end. So dolophane, right. pain, end. But there was rumor or thought belief that dolophine is in Adolf. Adolf. Yeah. Right. There you go. I like your because story better. It, so it wasn't yeah. as cra- it wasn't crazy. It wasn't it didn't just make that up completely. It wasn't made up. It was yeah. that's the key. It wasn't yeah. just made up. <laughs> I I someone just else lied to up. Scott and then he lied to us. Yeah. Okay. I got that up. I internet. did not make it up. I simply regurgitated <laughs> an absolute rumor. <laughs> exactly. Which brings me back to remember, if you're in the US, use my code on imutant.com. Wrong doesn't work. There you go. <laughs> oh, it's all over for me. I don't know if this one will be fun or not. It gives us an opportunity to be fun unless we don't want to be fun. (laughs) We don't like fun. Which which (laughs) fictional character do you think would have the most successful OnlyFans account? Ooh. Oh, this is fantastic. Fuck. Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Are we we going to go like like Wonder Woman? She just straight to Marvel? Would you sign up for Wonder Woman? I wonder what Wonder Woman can do. Oh, man. Let me think here. Oh, come on. You don't want to see Wonder Woman? You want to see? You want to see just what, like, what, like, what is this going to be about? Well, see, but I wanted to go further. I wanted to go further because, like, what if I went under the sea with Ariel? Oh, Ariel. Yeah. I've got some sort of fish fuck going on here. I mean, that's a different thing. (laughs) That'd be successful. Animalism, right? That is. That is. I have a feeling, though, that that would probably do well. You know, you got to have a niche. You got to have riches and niches. Yeah, this is interesting. I was you know? I was thinking, did like Aladdin's girlfriend also have a magic carpet ride? I mean, that'd be cool. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> See, I went Marvel and he went cartoon. I don't know yeah, which one of I us would be more All disturbed. the way down. <laughs> Definitely cartoon. I was thinking like that's you know, creepy. Paris Hilton, because that's a fi- pretty much a fictional character. <laughs> pretty much a fictional <laughs> character. She's not even real human. <laughs> well, if you're going to go that way, then Kim Kardashian, she's already done it. Um, yeah, yeah. She's 82% man, man-made, so it's fine. And by yeah, the way, yeah, I yeah. support that. Fictional character. 
What about That's like what about like you, you know like just think of all the girls on all the TV shows too. Like you imagine oh, if God. like imagine back when Friends was popular. Oh like yeah. Rachel had an OnlyFans account. Oh yeah. I'd have, I'd sign up. It'd blow I'd sign up. up today. I'll do it It'd now. Blow up. She got one. Sorry, what? It'd blow up. <laughs> yeah, like It'd 1990s Buffy the Vampire Slayer. She was Same really popular. Point. You remember that Huge. show? Huge. Huge. Spice Girls. There you go. Those were fictional characters. Yeah. Okay. Good point. Good point. See. Okay. See. There we go. That was fun. It was fun. Hey. Okay. Any other any other questions? Do we have any other questions? No, I left it all on you today. It's all on you. Didn't Ron. you just do a question box, Dusty? I did that for selfish reasons. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, though, here's the truth. Because I'm not getting as many views because I don't know what happened to my Instagram, um, all I, I I just get kind of the same questions really often um, or, like, my opinion questions. But, like, not opinion on fun stuff. Like they, And I'm like, why do you care what I think? It's been proven many, many times that most of the time I don't think. And... They still ask, you know, That's I'll get funny. questions like, you know, I'm having this problem with my relationship. I'm like, you come to me. What's wrong with you? <laughs> Why don't you go back a few years? It hasn't always been solid. Ah, anyways. Yeah. Oh, actually, I had there one he here. goes. I, so I, got him. I just remembered I had one. So if you guys have used this anonymous app, what you'll notice is that there's questions that are fake that get sent to you. Oh, really? Because they're trying to make you feel good. Like if you put it up and no one asks you any questions, it'll generate some fake questions. Huh. And they actually just were forced to change the way those ones look so that you kind of know that it's a fake question. Oh, that's fun. Huh. So for example, like I'll pull up a fake question here. Um, I like this. I like where this is going. Also yeah, like so we're so pathetic. We need fake questions. Yeah. No one <laughs> yeah, so like I didn't put up a confession link. I put up a anonymous comment link. Okay, right. But I got a confession. See this one? Oh, Oops, it went, went away. Like weird. Which one was it? I'm trying to trying to find it. Yeah, like this one says, "I know you had a crush on me," but. It's a confession box, and I never put a confession box up. Mm. And it says down here, yep. from and from the app sent with love from Team NGL. Hmm. So I it's have a fake had a crush on Team NGL. Yeah. So, but then time. when you get a real question, when you get a like a real one, they look like. Let me just find a real one because they're like all mixed in here, and you could tell the Autobot ones. Did it, did it. Yeah, like this one is like an actual question. Are mutant oh, products yeah. available in India? You know what I mean? So they look different. So just pay attention to that stuff. Are we in India? We are in India, aren't we? Yes. We have a distributor there. Yeah, yes. we are. Yeah. Have you guys ever if been to say, India? Yeah. Either of you? I haven't. No, but I've been to Leeds and eaten amazing Indian food. Does that count? <laughs> it's close. It's close enough. I freaking <laughs> love that food. I haven't been to India, but I've been to Leeds. Actually, Trust I did. Me. Funny. I did have a bunch more if we needed any questions here. Shoot away. You're saying you need you some got? questions here, Ron? What about this one from Brody? Uh, very regular listener of our shows. He says, tremendous gentlemen, respect to you all. Question for the next podcast. Big Ron, please tell us more interesting stories with mutant crazy experiences at the booth or maybe an interesting dinner with other bodybuilders. Cheers. Oh, well, I mean, I wouldn't even know where to begin. I have one. You know, okay. That you can you begin go. with that. You can See, begin look. with. See, there's Dusty. not even me, See. but it's not me. I'm going to have you do it. Thanks, Dusty. Get it going. Get it going. No, the, uh, the dinner with the chair and rich. Oh, yeah, I told that story a few times, but I don't remember if I told it on the It's been, the show. You told it here, but it was a long time ago. Do Some it. Of our OG Do it. Fans, That's a good story because here. people love so Rich. We were, we were shooting with Rich Piana in L.A., and we went to this Mexican restaurant. It was like a real nice restaurant. Like we, we all went and like showered and put our jeans on. 
you know, dress Easy. jeans or whatever. I think Rich probably still wore shorts. Um, but like we, uh, and then we went, we went out to this Mexican place and they were seating us and it was a packed restaurant, nice big open room and everyone's staring at us. Cause like there's this big team of giant guys, you know, all sitting down middle of a busy restaurant, everyone's staring at us and we all sit down and Rich sits down and his chair breaks and he fucking collapses backwards and everyone goes, Oh, you know, like when the <laughs> silence kind of like the sound gets sucked out of the room, like, Oh. And then he just jumps up and holds a chair up, broken chair up over his head. And he goes, I win. <laughs> He's the biggest. <laughs> and, and, and then like everyone laughed. Cause That's like, great. cause you know, this big guy's going to be mad. Where's the manager? You know, like that sort of thing. <laughs> he wasn't, like, wasn't even remotely upset. He just, uh, you know, He's probably thinking, oh, damn, we didn't get that on Instagram, you know? Yeah, that would have got me a million hits. Was was he with Mutant before you, Ron, or after you? After. I was already there. I remember okay. um, my my boss at the time sent me photos of him. And yeah. He's like, hey, do you know this guy? Do you know of this guy? And I recognized him from when he had won the Californias. He had just had the flame tattoos on his forearms. That was it. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, that guy's a beast. I've seen that guy, like... I still think I saw Rich at Gold's when I went there in the 90s. I still think that I saw him because, like, I remember when I met him later, I was like, I think I saw you at Gold's back in the day. You know what I mean? He was big. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I was there already. And and then they were like, oh, we're thinking of bringing him on. He's got a bunch of tattoos now. And then they sent me, like, a newer photo of him. Because, you know, I I hadn't seen him in years, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? So, yeah, it was one of those. I don't even think most people, including myself, knew him as a competitor. Like, I remember seeing a YouTube video of him, like, showing his cars and his dogs and, like, just yeah, being yeah, rich, dude. you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because he won the 99 California. He won, like, the Mr. California in 99 and went to nationals. And I think he was fifth in, like, the super heavies, like, back in the day. Yeah. You know, it was, like, Gerard Dente and, you oh, know, wow. fucking, like, all those guys banging away in the supers you know what i mean yeah yeah here i got one for you it was i work all day eight hour shift and then i i get to the gym and i want to get my workout done i love training with my training partner but he's the type of guy that wants to wait for machines if they're busy i would rather just move on and go to something else what's the best way for us to reach a compromise so it sounds like he's training with someone who's pretty stubborn and they want to like, you know, we're using this, you know, like, you know what I mean? We're squatting in this yeah. rack today, like that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I follow to me. It's, it, it's pretty simple. I mean, if you're set on what you want to do and he's set on wanting to wait for the machine, maybe he's follows a certain program and really wants to, I would just say, Hey, no offense, but I, I got to get my ass home. So if you want to roll that way, no problem. I'm going to be in here. But when we get to that piece, I'm moving on. I mean, I, I I wouldn't worry about someone's feelings. Then he can make he can make a decision. If he right. wants to train with you more than he wants to wait for that piece of equipment, he'll come with you. You've made the decision that you would rather get the hell out of the gym than train with him. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. It's not right, personal. right, okay. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Scott? Yeah. I, what if you're training with somebody? In a, what if you're training with somebody in a busy gym and – and you're like, oh, let's hack. And then there's someone on the hack. And they're like, oh, I got three sets left. Are you, you the type of guy that's like, you yeah, get creative, you, you know, you just do. And I hate those wanna, days. You, I, I remember I, I have clients who will tell me like, oh, hey, I couldn't do this exercise last night because the gym was packed. And I'm like, oh, yeah, I remember that that happens at gyms, doesn't it? Because I just trained. Yeah, not at 11 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's that, too. What time. what do you do? Like, let's say you're not in a rush. Like, let's just say you're just training normally, but your Lose training your partner point. is like, oh, he's got three sets left. Let's wait. Are, are you the type of guy that would wait three sets? Like, just typically not being in a rush. Or would you be like, I'm not waiting three sets. I'm going to do pendulum today. What do you I'd, think you'd typically do? I'd change it. I just like if three sets, if I'm going to lose my pump, you know, it's like that's the worst thing in the world. When you're in the middle of a good workout, your heart rate's up. Everything's going smooth. Then you got to like stop and get back into it. You know, I 
I wouldn't, unless it was early. Let's say it was early. Let's say like we're going to do uh, hamstring curls first, get get the hamstring good and warmed up, and then we're going to the hack squat next. And I, I'm eyeballing that, and that guy's saying he's got three more sets. And I'd be like, oh, yeah, we'll take a little bit more time on the hamstring curl maybe. You know? Right. Mm-hmm. That right. makes sense. What about you typically, Dusty? If you're not in a hurry, would you wait with your with your buddy or would you say, hey, I'm going to go do something else? It depends. Like back in the day when I was on a strict program, I would have waited. Um, but it's also, I mean, also this is a luxury, but why I would train when I did. When I had right. the business, I would train at 1030 at night to avoid that. <clears throat> I don't right. I didn't have kids or anything like that. So that was fine. But now, no, I would just do something else. All I'm trying to do is find a way to, to create pain for the body. So right, right. if there's another choice, I just walk over, come back to it later. Sometimes it's a great opportunity to be creative. You yeah. go do something else, then you come back and like, All right, I'm not going to be quite as strong. So I'm going to up the reps and I'm going to slow the negatives and make this hack harder than usual. So it's not a mind fuck that I'm not doing as many plates. I don't know. Huh. Next, right. next day, you can barely walk just because you did a different order and a different rep scheme or, or you know, speed. Right. Okay. Yeah. I'm pretty easy going now. So it would just. It would just depend on the circumstances. I could see myself doing both. Mm-hmm. I could see myself doing, oh, if you're going to wait for that, I'm going to go do like three sets of this because I just got a killer pump. Or just depending on the day, you know, I could see myself like, hey, no problem. I need to, uh, I'll take a breather. Fuck. You know what I mean? So he yeah. just pretends he's training with me on that day. Oh, this is yeah. like waiting for Dusty to do one <laughs> fucking set. <laughs> Waiting for I, Dusty to do one fucking set. I got another good one here. Another YouTube question. Um, question for the next one. If you were a superhero or villain, what would your power be? Webs like Spider-Man, etc. cetera. And uh, what would be your name? Thanks again for the continued Ooh. entertainment. Hmm, that's tricky. Did your superpower have anything to do with panties? <laughs> I was trying to work around it, but then I get nervous because, like, if I'm doing X-ray vision, I got to see everyone. Can I have selective X-ray vision? Yeah. Oh God! Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, it's funny. I'm the watching thing- the boys now, right? So you know, you're watching the boys now, and there, there's all those like B level and C level, D level superheroes that have like one skill but they're not like bulletproof or anything uh, yeah, and you think yeah. the other superheroes all think they're a joke you know it's like i think i think i would want to try to think because i mean all kidding aside that the one thing i enjoy about those kind of things is your sup- your superpower also is a bit of a problem you know like in, in other ways so man i guess i would have to go what about what? What's the um, what's this? What's this? The uh, guy that uh, Ryan Reynolds plays. What's his name? Uh, Ryan Reynolds. Yeah, yeah. What's is his little the, car? He... Oh God! Oh, you mean Dead Deadpool? Deadpool. I would be Deadpool because I feel like his greatest thing is he's funny, right? <laughs> and that's how he is picking up chicks all the time. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> he's burned to a crisp, though, Dusty. Dude, that I love that show. That's fantastic. You can tell I'm not a true superhero person. Right. Okay. It's offensive to someone else right now. They have they are not using my code no matter where they live. I always thought teleportation would be the the one you'd want because you could just kind of go anywhere you wanted and you could like, you know, you could use it to your advantage. So you you know financially you'd be able to do so many cool things because you could just go wherever you wanted instantly and all that sort of stuff so you'd be all right it'd be a good superpower you're not hurting anybody right. else but you're just really efficient that'd be kind of cool <laughs> like think of vacations you could like literally travel anywhere you wanted it's very inconvenient yeah, yeah. to have to fly yeah 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 well yeah. You, know, you know what i mean long trips you'd be like hey let's go to thailand for a workout now now you know yeah that would be yeah. cool too because i'm not looking forward to the flight to dubai that's a long yeah like that flight. yeah yeah so that was funny that's like the the one thing dusty and i are going to dubai for the muscle show at the end of october yeah and i got my flight and i'm like uh what are we talking i remember this like how many hours well we're talking i'm talking 9 45 from nine hours 45 from vancouver to london 
Yeah. And then it's six and a half from London to Dubai. Mine is basically the same. <clears throat> it's, um, I go an hour the wrong way because I'm coming out of a small place. So I got an hour to Atlanta, uh, eight hours and something to France, and then six and a half to Dubai. It's a long trip. Yeah, exactly. And I go there, I leave Wednesday, and I come back Monday. Whew. So it's yeah. fast. Well, and you and you get there, whatever. I think I leave Wednesday, but I don't get there till Thursday. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> hey, only oh, coming of, back is slower. By the way, add two hours to both of our trips coming back. That's I thought how it I, works. I thought I'd tell you guys a story about time travel. I just thought of this one the other day. It was the closest thing I ever had to time travel, and I knew this guy. In, back in high school and like post high school, this guy was always kind of wild. His name was Dave. He was a real full big, name. Let's, I'm let's not going to do it. I thought about it. <laughs> big, heavy set guy. And we called him skinny. And nice. uh, he Rude. was always a terrible driver. Like I remember he had this like Ford tempo and we were going to this bonfire party in the snow and he literally took like a 360 in the car and I'm just in the back seat, Just like I was just getting a ride to the bonfire. It was crazy. Well, after that, he got, this is like, you know, mid nineties. He got one of the Mustang 5.0s, like the old eighties style, you know? Yeah. It was fast. And he was a guy who shouldn't have a car like that. And we were at my friend Chuck's house and we had been there until like real late partying and all that. And I was like, Hey man, can you give me a ride home skinny? And he was like, yeah, sure. And Chuck lived, it was on a, like one of the major side streets so that it was like all the neighborhoods connected to this side street but it was still 25 miles an hour and there's a stop sign every you know couple hundred feet and there was a light so between chuck's house and my house there's probably like six to seven stop signs it was one mile and one light and it's like two o'clock in the morning he's like sure i get in the car with him <clears throat> and he drove like he literally put his foot to the floor and he did not let it up until we got to my house like every stop sign, the light, everything. It was the weirdest feeling because I literally like just left Chuck's house and like one minute later, it felt like one minute I was at my house. I was like, <laughs> holy shit, don't ever ask Skinny for a ride again. That's yeah, funny. Wow. It was crazy, man. It was it was nuts. <laughs> Gold. Okay. Okay. Is that it? I think so. I think I'm out of I'm out of everything, guys. What's left for you. today for you? I've got to go train to, legs early today. I have to eat a lot behind. Hmm. Okay. Client check-ins for me. <laughs> Client check-ins for you. Okay. Remember, everybody, like, share, subscribe, comment. Ring the bell. Scott. Ring, ring the bell. Scott. Oh. Scott. There you go. There we go. There you go. My bell's Thanks, broken. everybody. Remember the codes. Big Ron 20, Dusty 20. And remember, it's just bodybuilding.